black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. And I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Uh, my first guest, Eli, is a Vietnam vet, and he had an encounter in Minnesota. I believe it was back in 1969 uh, was his first encounter while he was out hunting. And then we'll be talking to Armando. Armando is actually a long-haul truck driver, and he stopped to go pee. He was down in Texas. His dog got out, went running out in the woods, and Armando went after his dog and ended up interrupting a hunt between two of these creatures and got a really good look at both of them. A very fascinating account. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchronicles.com for your daily blog. You can become a member, get additional shows. Uh, if you get a free moment, definitely check it out. Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Eli to the show. Eli, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. And I know you had an encounter, uh, gosh, right around the time the Patterson Gimlin film was uh, around that time it was being filmed. Um, if you would, just kind of start from the beginning, if you would, kind of tell us what you were doing and walk us into what, what happened. Is, is this about, what, 1969? Yes, it was uh, November of 69. Um, I had gone up to a place that I'd gone hunting with my dad a few times between Lutzen and Grand Marais, Minnesota. I was going to be going to Vietnam within two weeks, and I just wanted to go hunting one more time up to a place my dad and I had gone many times before. And um, I'd gone up a couple of days early to make a blind. I wasn't a big fan of climbing trees and with those tree stands. And so I built a blind on the ground by taking some galvanized pipe and pounding them in the ground because it hadn't been froze up there yet. And uh, stuck some vertical uh, willow branches in it and weaved some other branches uh, through it to make like a, I guess like a duck blind actually and uh, left a couple shooting holes. I'd been carrying that year. I had borrowed it because I didn't have a rifle uh, at that time. A uh, Ruger 44 Magnum, which is a small, short rifle. And no scope on it because up in that area in Minnesota, most of your shots are probably 20, 30 yards because it's so wooded. And the blind was facing almost due north. And to the east was a, oh, probably an acre or half acre of uh, oh, uh, blackberry bushes and what I used to call, wait a minute, where you walk through them and you get hung up on the thorns and couldn't go anywhere. And you spent half the time trying to get out of the thorns. And to the west side was a cornfield that the DNR had planted 
occasion they would plant DNR, uh, DNR would plant uh, cornfields and wouldn't pick it. Uh, so the deer could have something to feed on in a winter time if the if the snow was real bad, and that was <clears throat> excuse me, and that was to the west of me. I was just sitting there for about two hours, and uh, actually kind of in the sun, just relaxing, because to be honest with you, I was quite nervous about going to Vietnam again. So it was just a way to get away and relax, and. Uh, all of a sudden, I seen, uh, heard something really at the beginning, something coming up the deer trail. And, but it was really flying up this deer trail. And in Minnesota, in that area, there's a lot, there's a fair amount of moose. And at first, I thought it was a moose coming up because of all the uh, noise it was making. But it turned out to be a doe. And the deer ran straight at my, um, camouflage site and made a turn to the east following the deer trail then went to the right of my uh, uh, camouflage stand and turned in to where I was sitting and it just startled the heck out of me and I didn't know what was going on this year's tongue was hanging out steam was just rolling off of it it was all lathered up the deer came in behind me and not more than six to eight feet away laid down and i was dumbfounded i didn't know what was going on and i hadn't really heard much of uh, sasquatches or bigfoots i guess i never paid attention to it even if i had i don't know if i would have believed about two or three minutes went by and it this did sound like a moose coming through that cornfield and dry corn makes so much noise and this was in november so uh you know all that corn was dried out and uh obviously i didn't have a moose license and they can get kind of ornery so i kind of backed up as far as i could but there was a deer behind me and then I heard something to the right coming through those thistles and uh, blackberries and raspberries or whatever they were. All of a sudden, all the noise stopped. And I didn't know what was going on. And then the noise from the cornfield started up again, but it wasn't coming at me anymore. It was going um, parallel to me. And also, I guess it'd be horizontal to me. And all of a sudden, this gorilla, as far as I knew, stepped out from the cornfield, looked my direction, and stepped right back into the cornfield. And then I heard, I want to call it a whistle or a grunt. I was so stunned. I don't know what I actually heard, to be honest with you. And then that same noise was repeated to my right. And I was simply terrified. I laid down in that little area I had by 44 across my chest and didn't move. I just laid there. And I must have laid there for half an hour. And I kept hearing the one in the cornfield just making all kinds of ruckus. Uh, running back and forth, back and forth. But the one to my right, on the east side, didn't really move. I seen the top of its head, because uh, that those willows or the, uh, you know, the berries or whatever you want to call them back over there, with the thorns on it, was about seven and a half or eight feet tall. And all I could see was the top of a head. I think it was a head at that time. All of a sudden, the one on the left-hand side screamed and took off away from me. And at the same time, the one on my right side took off away from me. And this doe casually got up and walked away. And 
I thought I was going to have to go empty my drawers. Yeah, I don't blame you. Strange behavior for a deer, but you tend to hear that a lot in a lot of encounters with hunters. They'll show up and they'll lay down next to a uh, deer stand, which is so bizarre. The one that stepped out that looked like a gorilla, can you describe what you saw from what you remember? Yeah, uh, you know, that was a long time ago. A lot happened since then. Um, it was dark, dark, dark brown. I'm going to say almost the black with a little bit of uh, red uh, on the tips of the fur, I guess you want to call it, highlights. And uh, I never really seen the face because it stepped out and stepped right back in. And all I could see it from that point on was the uh, fur kind of sticking out from the cornfield because it hadn't gone but about a row in. And I could see, you know, a dark object in the cornfield. That's all I could see. And the one on the other side, um, I could I never seen that. I just seen the top of, of a head, which was... Uh, a brown and that's all I seen over there. Let me ask you, what what do you think was going on in your opinion? Do you think they were chasing this deer and I then... think they chased that deer out of where it, its cover was. It ran down the deer trail and turned the corner and I don't think it knew I was there at first. But it turned to the east and then made another turn to the west, you know, just a matter of a few feet and came right into my little uh, land or or ground blind. I, you know, I was just totally stunned. I wouldn't shoot a doe. I didn't have a doe license. And uh, I really didn't care if I even harvested a deer. I just wanted to go up north and I just wanted to get away and try to relax for a few days. I understand. Weird behavior for a deer. It's almost like the deer know uh, I'm going to run up to this human and I'll be safe. You know, that's outside of everything we know about deer's behavior. Generally, they'll run from you uh, before it to run up, and it's almost like it knew. To be honest, it's lucky I I didn't run over it trying to run away, but I figured that... uh, uh, you know, I'd been over to Nam months and running was not a good idea. Uh, it was stand your ground. And that's what I did. I think they were chasing uh, that doe. And when it came in by me, uh, they got my uh, they got my scent or they smelled me and stopped and were a little upset. And the one in the corn started running back and forth. I think it was trying to flush that deer out. Well, let me ask you this, Eli. What what did you think you were looking at at the time? I mean, here it is, 1969, and you're running into gorillas in Minnesota, uh, or what you described to be a gorilla. I mean, what what was going through your mind at the time? Well, you know, I had heard of Bigfoot and Sasquatch. And initially, you know, it was a gorilla. I don't know how one got there, but as I was just laying there flat on the ground, I went and I'm talking to myself, basically. I said, this has to be what people call Sasquatches or gorillas or um, Bigfoots. And that's all I knew other than the fact that I was terrified because even with that 44 I had with the size of this thing, I don't think I would I could have brought it down. It, it looked like it was, oh, I liked wrestling. And it looked like it was Andre the Giant standing out there, the fur. Just, uh, you know, something like him anyway back then. Just a huge beast. And I was just terrified. And uh, after it was all over with, and they went on their way. I packed up my stuff, and I went back to Minneapolis. (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, I, no one can blame you for that. I, and it's so it's such a unique encounter. I realize this is 1969, but I've heard many encounters like this. A lot of hunters will say the deer come running right up to them, and the hunters are confused. They're not really sure what's going on. And then moments later, they'll see the thing that's chasing it. Uh, very bizarre. But you go off to Vietnam, and yes. then you come back a couple years later, four or five years later, and you have another experience. Tell us, tell us what happened. Uh, four of us from where I worked went to, um, uh, on a Friday, we decided let's go grouse hunting on that Saturday. So we left from work and went up to, oh, a town, an area called Deer River, which is in, uh, oh, what county is that? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember what county is. It's uh, Itasca County. It's central Minnesota uh, as far as um, – it's about four hours away, but it's in the central part of the state. And it's really good grouse country. You know, both of us were ex -mil – oh, both of us, all four of us were ex-military. And uh, we decided, well, let's just go ahead and camp out and save some money because we were just going to hunt for a day and then come back. Well, we went to bed about, oh, crawled in the tents about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and we built a big fire to, uh, you know, ward off bears, or if there was any bear, black bears, all there was is Minnesota's black bears. Uh, I seen one uh, cougar, I guess, the whole time I've lived in the state, and that was near my home. <laughs> Here just about 10 years ago. We crawled in the tents, and the other tent was at a right angle from me, about 15, 20 feet away. And both openings were facing the um, fire. And I heard something out in the brush. Didn't know what it was, figured it was a deer or something. I wasn't attuned to hearing biped or whatever. I just heard something out there. And all of a sudden, whatever it was, started running. And all of a sudden, my tent was trampled and basically picked up and rolled over. We had the type of tents that weren't uh, staked down. They were just those uh, fiberglass rods that, you know, held them up. And this tent basically took off and rolled us both over and I crawled out and uh, uh, uncased my shotgun and put uh, four rounds in it. I, I had a, uh, uh, it was a Benelli at the time. It was either Benelli or a Brownie. I can't remember which one it was. And, uh, you know, the guys in the other tent came out, what the hell's going on? And I go, I have no clue what's going on. I said, something just ran over us. I'm assuming it's a bear. And so we stood around and talked for a little bit, and they helped me set the tent back up and crawled back in. But I uh, kept the shotgun loaded and had it, you know, barrel pointed out the opening. But then about 20 minutes after we laid back down, they started hollering. I crawled out as fast as I could, and I looked over towards her tent, and I seen something kind of round the corner from their tent. Their tent had been flipped over, too. And, in fact, one of the guys was pretty not badly hurt, but very uncomfortable because he got stepped on. And when I looked out, this all happened a matter of seconds. I just seen something running away, and I fired three times. And it was, uh, uh, you know, we were grouse hunting, so I had number seven birdshot in it. And I figured it was a bear, and I just didn't want it to come back. But I hit it in the backside. I'm sure it was the backside. And it screamed. And we all looked at each other and went, bears don't scream. Uh, we sat up the rest of the night, you know, until the first dawn, first light, 
and we left. I didn't want anything to do with that. And we went over to the area it was at, but it was so dry and there was so, all the leaves were down because it was the fall. And I could see where a freight train had gone through the brush and kicked up the leaves, but there was no footprints or anything like that. I never mentioned to the guys I was with about the first incident. I didn't want them to think I was crazy. Uh, this has never been told except to my wife. And it's only people that know this except for the guys I are with. And only one of those, them are currently still living. Well, that's about it. Yeah, it's a fascinating account. And I really appreciate that you would take the time to share it here. Uh, it makes you wonder if it was, I mean, we're just speculating here, Eli, but it, it makes you wonder if it was like a young one that was coming through and was just kind of screwing with you guys or, uh, cause a lot of times in the behaviors I've noticed from interviewing eyewitnesses in situations like what you're in, uh, they will do stuff like this, but it's generally the young ones. You know what I mean? I would, would it have been two or would it have been one? one going one direction and the other one later coming the other direction because I could see, I don't want to say silver, but uh, the back of it side of it looks shiny. You know what I mean? It kind of, with the fire, it kind of oh, shimmered a little bit. Are you talking about when you shot it? Yeah. You know what I could see. And I just, I probably wasn't the proper thing to do, but I wasn't about to have that thing trample on us again whatever it was. Oh, I don't blame I figure, you. I figure bird shots were really not going to, even the bear, I said, I figured it was a bear. I said, bird shots really aren't going to do any harm to that thing at 20 or 30 yards away. It's going to hurt. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely going to hurt. And, you know, they had their, you know, it was that time of year, they're going to go into hibernation, and they had, uh, you know, I didn't think at the time, but they had a, a heavy layer of fat on them. And their fur would have been awful thick at that time, too. But the way it went across the top of them and me, you know, uh, it wasn't a bear. After you think about it, you know, bear wouldn't have done that. No, I don't think so either. I don't think. And then came back. I don't think I don't see a bear doing that. And, you know, did, after all this happened, did you talk to your friends that were there? Were you guys... Was there ever a conversation of what the hell was oh, that? Oh, yeah, we talked about it. We talked about it, at, uh, uh, you, know, about, uh, you know, about what it was. And a couple of them mentioned uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch. And I just basically played dumb. I didn't want to admit that I had an encounter once, encounter once before. Uh, we just talked about what I could possibly, and you know, two of the guys were, you know, pretty convinced that it, it was a um, Sasquatch or Bigfoot. And uh, the other person uh, didn't really have an opinion. They thought it was a bear. And I didn't think it was a bear, but I wasn't going to say anything else. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. And I know you went to Vietnam. You saw a lot of bad things. And I would imagine most that sticks with you in your life. But relating back to this encounter when you guys were this situation and the one before, did it ever affect you in your life? Did you ever go, I'm never going camping again. I'm never hunting again. Screw this. Well, I've never been a big uh, fan of camping, especially after Vietnam, because I spent close to two years in a Quonset hut, you know, uh, which is a much more than sleeping in a metal tent. Uh, so I've really never gone, uh, camping again, unless it was in a, a tent trailer that my parents used to have, uh, which is, you know, uh, just a tent that's on a frame. Kind of a pop-up. Yeah. Yeah. It was a pop-up. You know, they're not even, they're not even allowed in the Yellowstone on that anymore because the bears have a tendency to rip the ends of them off. And, uh, unless you're in a special area that only uh, uh, that tent that um, tent campers can be in uh, because they don't want to take a chance of a bear, you know, a grizzly going through there. 
Yeah, and I know you've had, you know, over 50 years to really think about this, going back to your first encounter. What do you think that they are? What's your opinion, Eli? I mean, you got to look at two of them. I know it's not a great look, but you got to look at two of them. You kind of experience the behavior in two different encounters. What, what's your opinion? I think they're in a, uh, uh, a species all their own. I don't think they're a, 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 a human that's changed or, uh, you know, I can't explain what I'm trying to say. I don't think it's a, a, a gorilla that's got different genes or even a human with different genes. I think it's a species all its own, like the gigantic pithesis, I think it was called back then. It's got to be something like that. It's got to be something that still exists and that, uh, uh, you know, there's people in Africa that still say there's dinosaurs out there. What makes them think that there's something like this couldn't still exist from, you know, uh, 200,000 years ago or or uh, 50,000 years ago? It's yeah, good point. Good point. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's, we know so little. Uh, I'm a scuba diver. I've di- dove all over the world. And there's so many things underwater that we don't know about. Oh, and we haven't even looked at all the um, land in the United States, let alone the world. How do we know what's still there? So you think it's more of a kind of a natural animal we haven't caught up with? Yeah, I do. I don't, I don't think it's an alien or anything like that. I think it's something that's left over. Yeah, you could be right. Let's hope you're right. You know, and it, and it it really, it's one of those fun questions I like to ask because there's really no wrong answer because no one knows as you brought up. I mean, there's so many places around this world we haven't even stepped foot on and even places in the Pacific Northwest, people haven't stepped foot on. They like to think they have, but I guarantee there's places out here where no man has been um, out in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? I've always wanted to go there, or go out to Washington State in that area. Closest I got was California <laughs> in the service. Yeah. But uh, uh, after my two incidents, uh, I've wanted to know more. But I didn't want to say, hey, George, hey, Fred, let's go to Washington State and learn more about these things. And um, I just never had the courage to ask anybody to do it. And until I started listening to your show, I didn't know anybody was out there really interested in it. Yeah, the the encounters happen more than most people might think. You know, it's... um. And I'm thankful that people like yourself will come forward and and share what happened to them Uh, because I think it helps the next person coming along going, well, you know, maybe I'll talk about what happened to me. Um, And that's kind of the whole point of the show. You know what I mean? It's been 40 years, you know, roughly for me. And uh, uh, but I can still see the one in the cornfield where I walked out looked in my direction, then step back. I can still see it. I never had a, a real good look at it, but I can still see it standing there and knowing that the 44 only held, I think it was four or five rounds in a, like the old Ruger 1022s, you know, the rotary clip. And uh, I only had like four rounds or something in it. And I thought, if that thing comes at me, I don't know if I can knock it down. I was going to aim for the knees or something like that, you know, the legs, because without the legs, you can't move. And it might have given me a chance to get away. I'm sorry, but I'm going to sacrifice that doll. <laughs> yeah, well, thank God I didn't come to that, you know. And it no. is kind of weird how they kept their distance from you. You know, and and almost like the doe knew I'm going to run to a human and, you know. Uh, I don't know if it knew I was there immediately until it turned that corner. Because I had a really good crown line. 
you know, maybe it was just trying to hide like I was. Oh, now I was trying to hide from their species. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Well, it's a fascinating account, though, Eli, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come on, and God bless you. Thank you for your service. I know that's something that's very cliche to say, but, uh, I mean, you, you got to well, love the heart of a volunteer, you know what I mean? You got, I'm really surprised of all the people that will stop me, and um, I'll have a Vietnam hat on or something like that, or a vest or something on from combat and they'll stop me and shake my hand. Uh, I went to Vegas one time and I couldn't walk 10 feet without somebody stopping me to shake my hand. I finally had to take my hat off. <laughs> I couldn't get anywhere. Yeah. You shouldn't be surprised like that. That's how we should treat our veterans. You know, I, I know it's not how you guys got treated when he came back from Vietnam, but you know, war is ugly. I don't think anyone really loves war. And I've said that before in the past. I don't think any, I disagree with every, I can go through every war and disagree with every single war we've been involved in. But having said that, you got to respect a guy that will put a uniform on, stand a post and do his job. And it's a volunteer. And I mean, God bless you. You know, no wonder well, just, hey, people should shake your hand when you walk down the street. You've earned it. I just did what my uh, country asked me to do. And I was yeah. a volunteer since I was in the Navy, so I wasn't drafted. I had health issues, so I couldn't have been drafted, so I joined anyway. Yeah, so, well, God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, you for doing it. And uh, again, thank you for your service, and, and thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I hope I didn't sound too uh, flustered, but I was pretty nervous here. No, <laughs> you did great. You did great. Thanks again, Eli. Come on. No problem, Wes. Uh, I got to get this off my chest. I've only told one other person, and uh, I think about it every day. Yeah, well, I appreciate you being here, and I know uh, you're a truck driver, and your encounter took place in Texas. <clears throat> if you would, would you mind just starting from the beginning and, and tell us what, what happened? What did you see? All right. Let me just start out by saying that uh, I'm originally from New Jersey. And uh, you would have to be living under a rock not to have heard about the Sasquatch video. That's the most famous one, you know. And, and you know, I'm, I'm from a city which I've never been camping and I've never done anything like that, you know, in my life. And um, anyway, uh, like I said, I've, I've seen the video and uh, I never really, you know, I've never really paid much attention to, to the woods or anything like that. And... Uh, uh, Anyway, I was uh, I'm a I'm a owner operator truck driver, and I was on my way to Dallas, Texas, from New Jersey, to buy a trailer, you know, so I can uh, continue making more money. And um, I was uh, 20 west, going on a night 20 west, and uh, I have my dog with me. His name is Buddy, little Jack Russell, really cool dog, you know, keeps me occupied, <laughs> and. Um, I was passing this stretch of road right along Longview, Texas. Okay. I remember correctly because, you know, once I went back and, and, and researched everything where I was and what happened, I was crossing Longview, but on I-20. And, uh, okay, in I-20, west and east was divided by a long, long patch of wood that divides the west and, and, uh, and the east side, you know. Anyway, okay, so a lot of times when I'm, it's called bobtailing, you know, where you, you don't have the trailer with you. And I'm able to pull over on the side of the, of the highway, and it just happened to be a patch where I can pull over, and, you know, I had to go take a leak. And uh, I let my dog out, you know, so the dog can go and do what it, what, what it does, you know. Normally, it likes to run around, and, you know, sometimes you bring me back a mouse or, or something like that little lizard or something and um anyway i put a little bell on his neck uh it was around it was around um the time was around 5 30 in the morning it was a little bit chilly this happened in um it was st patrick's day march 17 january march 17 i think it was and um Anyway, I put a little bell on his neck, so when he goes into the wooded area, I can hear and I can actually sense where he is, you know, because he likes to wander around all over the place. 
And, um, okay, so then, you know, I let him out of the truck. I get out, and I'm just hanging outside, you know, taking a look at the stars and stuff like that. And then uh, I see he went into the woods, and I tell him, all right, come come back real quick. He, he understands me. Little time went by, and then I started to notice that there was no sound. It was off the highway, you know. I had walked into the wooded area a little bit from my truck, you know, just to get away from, from the highway a little bit. Um, and I noticed that there was no sounds. And to me, I was like, wait a minute. What the hell's going on here? No crickets, no morning birds. But it was like 5.30 in the morning, you know. And the sun was going to be coming up pretty soon. There was like a little tiny cold mist in the air, you know. I said, what is, what's going on? Nothing. I can't hear anything. And then uh, I could hear my dog's little bell, you know, ringing as he's going through the woods. And then all of a sudden, I felt like this feeling that something is watching me. I got chills in my spine and I was looking around and I was like, what the hell is that? And then I, I kept like looking around and looking around. Nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't hear my dog's bell anymore. And I said, hey, hey, buddy. He wouldn't answer me. He'll normally bark. You know, he'll bark at me and let me know. And then uh, all of a sudden, I heard like animals running through the woods. Like a little different, different, like a little, little pack of animals scurrying through the woods. You can hear them clearly. And uh, I was like, what the hell is that? And then I can hear... It sounded like pigs to me, you know, like, like, <laughs> that type of pig sound, you know? And I said, I said, okay, man, I know that in Texas there's wild boars. And I've ran into them when they cross the roads, you know, when, while I've been out in Texas on other trips. They cross the road, you know, like it's nothing. They'll cross the road in the middle of the night and, and they want you to get out of their way. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was pigs. I could hear pigs. And then they stopped for a minute. And then, again, they started running really fast again. And then I heard, I heard something like a, like, a, like a squeal from coming from one of the pigs. I could hear it super loud, like something had grabbed a hold of this pig. And it was going off. And then I was like, oh, my God, my dog. You know, Buddy, buddy is, is, is getting bitten by the pigs or attacked by the pigs. And I started calling out to him, Buddy, hey, come here. And I wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't answer me and I couldn't hear a bell. So then I got closer and closer and I started creeping into the woods where I saw Buddy go in. And it was about, you know, I kept walking and walking, maybe, maybe like 30 yards into the woods. And then, Buddy, come here. Hey, nothing. I couldn't hear nothing. And then I could hear the pig again, squeal again. One last time, a loud squeal, super loud squeal. And then the other pig's running. And then uh, it was like, a, and then it stopped. Like, like he, he was done. Like, I was like, oh, my God, either, either Buddy grabbed him by the nuts or something because Buddy's really tiny. Buddy's tiny, you know, and the pig stopped squealing. And I'm saying to myself, that can't be Buddy because pigs are a lot bigger than him. And then uh, I said, hey, come here. Where are you? And he would not answer me. And I was like, oh, my God, they killed my dog. And, uh, okay, so I kept walking and walking, and I finally heard a little, uh, like, a little uh, whimper from him, you know? And I said, hey, what are you doing? Come here. Where are you? And I saw him, and there he was standing, and he was looking straight up, like frozen, looking up at a tree. And I said, come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? And at the same time, my lights, uh, Wes, I, 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 uh, I shut the truck off, but I leave my lights on so I can shine them into the woods towards where, where I'm heading and where Buddy is heading, you know? And I have some powerful fog lights, and I have some good lights that can shine through the, through the leaves and, and some trees, you know? So then uh, the light was shining on him and part of the tree. And uh, I said, uh, come here, what are you doing? And I'm looking around for the pigs. And I'm going, where the hell are these pigs? And then I said, are you all right? And then he would not move. He wouldn't move, and he kept looking up into the tree. And then when I looked up into the tree, oh, my, I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> there was this, there was like a monkey 
giant monkey looking thing crouching on a branch that was broken, maybe like 15 foot up of the tree, maybe a little bit more. But I can see it because of the light of the moon and my light sort of shining into the woods. I can see the bottom half of it and I can make up the top. It, it, it was moving its arms and I was like, what the hell? To myself, I didn't say it out loud. I was just quiet. And my dog got behind me and he started whimpering a little bit right in between my legs. And then I said, oh my Lord, what the hell is that? And then it made a loud noise and was pointing away from me. I was, I was facing it, but it was giving its back to me while I was on, while I was on the branch. And then it pointed and it made it sound like this, which I go back in time, Wes, and I remember everything clearly. You know, I recall it. It made it sound like this. Like that. And I was like, it sounded like rock. And then all of a sudden in front of it, maybe like another, maybe like another 15 feet in front of it, the woods started to, you could hear it like crashing and out of nowhere in front of, came out this other looking creature. Huge, huge gorilla man looking being. And I was like, my heart just started pumping so fast. And I got down. I got down. I grabbed my dog and I was hiding in between some bushes. And I was like, oh, my Lord. What? And the lights were hitting it. My lights were hitting that being on the bottom half of its feet and a little bit of its, of its, of its belly. A little bit. And I was like, oh, my Lord. I said, what is that? And then the one that was on the tree um, said something else. It sounded like a some weird mumbling, and then, and then the one that was coming out of the woods had something in its arm, and then it just moved a little bit closer. The light started going up and up, up its body, and I could see that it was a huge-looking ape man, giant, and it had the pig in its arm. And that's the pig that I was hearing squealing, I'm guessing, you know? And uh, anyway, it started to move forward and forward. And then all of a sudden, from the wooded area that divides the highways, the east and the west side, I heard a, a chirping sound, which sounded like this. And I was like, it was like, and then my dog looked that way, and I looked that way, and... And the creature that was on the tree turned around and I could actually, now I can see a little bit of its face and look that way too. And then look down and look towards us. And I was like, oh my God, we, we, they, they spotted us. They spotted us. And she said to him something. She said to, to, the, to the big, it's a male, it was a male. I'll tell you why in a little bit. And, and the one that was upstairs was a female. I found out later on. Um, anyway. She said something to him, which sounded like a, a, something like that. And then she jumped down from the tree, almost 20 feet up, Wes. And when this thing hit the floor, I can feel it. It was like, boom. And then, and then she, she went to her, towards him and sort of like told him something. And then he started looking my way. And then she screamed. She, she did it like a loud towards me and I, I felt it I felt like chills down my spine and it felt like like I got hit and I just completely froze froze completely and I could not even move and then she started to, to like look towards where the wooded area was where the chirp came from and she took off I've never seen anything move that fast this thing, this thing took off, and it was on, it was on two legs. It was like a big monkey running faster than, than anything I've ever seen. And then she disappeared into the wooded area, going that way. And he just kept staring at me, and I could see he was staring at me because the lights were hitting it, and it had red eyes. It had like this red, almost like the same color. Of, of like the backs the back of a, of a car you know the lights in the back of a car yeah and I, 
and I can and I can see that it blinks, it blinks, and then it started moving closer to me. And he was like, uh, maybe like like I said, I was in the woods like thirty yards in. He was like another another twenty yards away from me. And the wooded area is not completely wooded, but there's little patches of woods around. And uh, then he began to move closer to me. And my dog just started going, <laughs> like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And, and finally, he, gave, he got so close, I got to see the entire figure. And it was, oh, my God. Oh, man. This thing was like three times a bodybuilder. The legs, I can see that, that his feet, I can see from the feet all the way up to his chest and a little bit of his chin. And I could see the red eyes. He had legs that they were like tree trunks, muscles, both of them like solid blocks of muscles. But he had a skinny waist. He had a, a skinny waist, and it, and it and it, did, it wasn't like a V shape, but he was bulky on the top. And all of a sudden, it opened up to a massive, uh, like a huge, boulder looking chest. And his shoulders were, oh my God, that's one thing that you can notice the most. His shoulders were so wide, so big, and he had long arms. His arms were hanging past his knees. Uh, he had one pig, he had the pig in one arm, and then the other hand just hanging past his knee. Like his elbow was hanging past his knee. And right away I was like, my God, what am I looking at? And then uh, it was dripping water. I can see because of the weather, it was a little bit cold. It was dripping water. I can see from the lights, the shadow of the light hitting them, you know, the, the light itself. It was dripping water and, and the pig, the pig was dripping water and it was steaming. You know, like, like in the winter time when, when you're running around and it's cold and it steam yeah. comes off your body. Yeah, when just you're sweating, like the, yeah. It was like giant steam coming off of both of them and water dripping. And then I, I was already like standing up a little bit, a little bit, but he could, he could see me because I'm looking up. I'm looking up at him and he was like in a little bit of a, sl of, a, of, a, of, a of a cliff, Tiny, not too big, but he was going up, uh, uh, up, a, up a cliff, you know, where I could see him. He was standing going upwards from where I was. So anyway, he screamed at me. When he screamed at me, he moved up a little bit more and I can see his face now. And he opened his mouth. When he opened his mouth, this roar, lion tantrum scream came out of him that knocked me backwards. It knocked me backwards. Like, like I, I, I moved backwards and it actually helped me knocked me even more backwards. And it was something like the, the way she screamed, but even louder, like a loud. <laughs> and it lasted maybe like 10 seconds. And I was like, oh my Lord. Oh my Lord, what? The no, 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 no. I started saying no, 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 no. I was screaming it, no. And my dog took off, he took off. And I normally leave the door of my truck open so then, so then um, I can have quick access to the truck. When I come back, I leave it open. I leave the radio on sometimes. But anyway, my dog is so tiny, he has never been able to jump in the truck the way that he did this time. And I know that he jumped in the truck because I found him inside the truck later on. You know, he has never been able to do that until that day. And uh, anyway, he took off. And then all of a sudden, this thing stopped and sort of like, like his lips curled and I can see his teeth. I can see the nails on his feet. He, it was full of hair. His whole body was full of hair. Maybe like, um, like three inch, four inch hair, you know? And he was like a, like a brown, dark brown, grayish. He had gray hair around his neck, like a part of his neck was gray and he had like a, like a nice manicured gold teeth. I, I was like, what the hell is this? And 
then he moved up more, a little bit more. And I, that's when I was like, he's going to come at me. And I said, no, no, no. And he screamed at me one more time. And he's still holding the pig in his hand. This pig was, was this pig was a big pig. This was a wild boar, black, with a tusk and everything. I can clearly see him. He had his mouth open and his tongue was out. And he, this guy had probably just choked him and broke his neck when, when I was hearing all that, that squealing. And he moved up a little bit more and he started to like sniff the air and like curl his teeth almost like, like the monkeys do, you know, like, and then he started to sniff the air, sniffing the air around. And then he sort of like looked, he hunched over and looked to the left and looked to the right. And he was swaying a little bit back and forth. And I was like, Oh my God, he's getting ready to come after me. And I was frozen whereas I could not move for my life. I was like, go move. And I couldn't move. He had little, little fangs, little canines on the, like we do, but I guess bigger than ours. Cause it, this thing was a monster. This thing had to be, oh, from later on and going back and looking at this situation, the size of the trees, this thing was about eight feet tall, wide and bulky and strong, solid. And uh, his teeth and his his toenails and his and his nails and his hand were like a dark greenish, yellowish looking, dirty yellowish green nails. And his teeth were yellow, because I could see them shining in the light. They were yellow. And he opened his mouth. He had a mouth that was like from ear to ear. He opened up his. You know how uh, when a big gorilla opens his mouth and shows you his fangs. Yeah, it was some. It was something like that when he did like a like if we do a yawn, but six times the the width of our yawn. It was so big, and his tongue was pink. It was a pink tongue. I can see it. I, I'll never forget it. And then he sort of like did like a, like a <clears throat> to me, and I was like, oh no 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 no, I'm leaving. I said I'm leaving, and I also said to him, I said, I I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to hurt you. And I don't know if he understood or whatever, but that's what I said. And I don't even know how that came out of me, but I said it. And then he did another scream. <laughs> to me again. And that's when I said, oh, Lord, that's enough. I I I'm out of here. And I started backing out, backing out. And he moved towards me a little bit more, a little bit more. And he kept smelling the air and he kept looking to side to side. And I'm guessing he was looking at my hands because he would duck down and he would look side to side and look towards my hands. And then I was like, I was showing him my hands like this, like, and then I realized, I said, oh man, this thing is looking at my hands. And I didn't know what the hell this was, but I understood it. I understood it. it's looking at my hands. And then I was like, no, no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And I started backing out, backing out. And then as he kept coming forward a little bit and he was still like, as I was backing out, he was still like, like a good distance from me. The lights hit him even more, and I could see him even clearer. His head was a small head. It wasn't big, but it was like a rounded, not the conical that a lot of people have been saying, because I've been listening to your show, and I've never heard your show until somebody, I told somebody my, uh, my story, uh, another truck driver from, from in the country, and they told me, you, you saw a booger. And I said, a what? He said, you saw a booger? And I said, a booger? And he said, a Sasquatch. And I said, what, really? And, I, and then it came to me, the video of Patty. It came to me, bloom. And I said, oh, my God, that's, that's what it, holy shit, that's what it looks like. And then, uh, anyway, he had like a rounded head. And it wasn't that big compared to the size of that body. He had muscles that no bodybuilder could ever have, no matter how many steroids these people take, Wes. I can see the muscles through the through the light and the hair, the wind and the wind was going towards him. I couldn't. They, there was no smell, you know. Like people say, there was a smell. There was no smell because the wind was was going towards him. Uh, it, it, I wasn't going up wind. I was going down wind. And uh, oh, he had a he had a huge scar on his leg, Wes. He had a scar on his thigh. That when the wind was hitting it. 
you can see the 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 hair move and you know how when you have a scar that it looks kind of shiny because it's healed over yeah. and, and it looks like like a tight patch of skin yeah. from from the scar his scar must have been that scar was about seven eight inches long and uh i put two and two together later on i'm saying he had that big scar on his leg maybe he'd been fighting these pigs for a long time and one of them finally got him but it healed over and that's what it looked like to me like if somebody took a knife and cut him in the thigh and then it healed over you know um okay so well i'm backing out i'm backing out and i can hear my dog inside i can hear him from inside the truck <laughs> he's screaming <laughs> and i was like i'm coming i'm coming and i'm backing out backing out and all of a sudden i heard on the other side where i were oh the female how i know it was a female because when she got close to him and the light sort of hit it i could see that it had breast it was it was a female and it didn't have the breast like uh like the patty video like long big hanging no this was like 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 tight muscly looking breasts uh they weren't really hanging hanging breasts but they were like solid uh, uh breasts and she was she was covered with hair and she was she was like a like a like a little bit lighter brown than he was um almost like um uh like coffee like like a light brown coffee like when you put milk in the in the coffee it was that kind of brownish color that I could see. And, uh, okay, so I heard I heard something going on in the wooded area in between the highways. And it sounded like a, like a, like they were talking to each other. And I, and I, later on, I figured it out. I said, that little chirp was probably a baby that they left while they were hunting. And then, uh, as I started walking backwards, I was like, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. And I said to myself, I better get out of here because this guy's going to grab me. And he could have he could have just taken a couple of steps, Wes, and, and been right on me and, and, and destroyed me. But he did not. He did not. I felt real scared in the beginning. But as he, as he kept sniffing the air and just walking slowly towards me, he gave me a nod, like a nod, like a, like move, like go, and I get, and that's what I got. Like, like go, get out of here before my wife comes back, or something like that, you know. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I sensed from it. And I was like, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, and I kept backing out, backing out. And my truck is was was right behind me, so I'm walking backwards. My truck is behind me, and the truck is shining the light on both of us. And and uh, he wasn't completely onto the highway. I was onto the highway already. And I was about to, to start walking towards my truck, but I said, just keep walking backwards. Keep walking backwards. Don't give him your back. And then uh, he stepped out into a, to the to the side of the road. He stepped out, and I could see it clearly now. My lights were hitting it dead on, man. And this thing started covering his eyes. Like, the lights were actually bothering him a little bit. And then he looked over to where the, where the female and, and I guess the baby was, and he he did like a like a like that, and then she answered with a. I remember clearly was the sounds are in my head. Then he stopped. He sort of just stopped, and I can see he moved his arm, and I can see the pig. He picked up the pig to show me the pig, and he picked it up like this, right by the back of the pig's neck, and he showed it to me. And I was like, uh, like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm not here for the pig. I'm not here for the pig. And I backed up and I backed up and I finally jumped in the car. And he's still standing there. He's still standing right there. And I can hear the, the baby and the mom, I guess, still doing a little chattering between themselves. I got in the truck. I slammed my door. And I had to back back out because he was standing in front. He was standing in front of the truck, maybe like, a, like I said, maybe like, 25, 30 feet from the truck. So I turned the truck on. When I turned the truck on, he sort of like got a little startled and he went, ooh, ooh. and I said, oh, I'm, I'm leaving. I kept saying, I'm leaving. And my dog is inside the truck and I'm looking for him and I'm going. And he was underneath the blankets in my bed. You know, you know, we, we have, we have beds. And uh, he was underneath the blankets 
going off. <laughs> and I said, I said, we're leaving, we're leaving, we're leaving. And then I started to back out slowly and slowly and slowly. And I finally put the truck on the highway. And for some reason, I-20, I-20 is not a, a lonely road, Wes. But that day, there was really not too many people around, man. There was not people around. Maybe another car went by the other side that I think I heard. Shoo, but that was about it. And no sound. There was no sound in that area. And I backed out. I backed out. And he finally sort of put the pig back down the way he had it. And he ran. He ran across the road real quick towards the wooded spot where, where I guess his family was. I backed out and backed out and backed out and backed out far enough where I could say, where the hell did they go? I could not see them anymore. And then I started moving forward. I started moving forward. And, and you know, those gears are really, they're short. And I couldn't move fast. You have to go second, third, fourth, and you go slowly until you hit like six gear. Then you start moving pretty quick. Eh, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I kept looking, looking and looking and looking and looking. And then I seen them again. They were, they were in a, in a, inside the woods, but I can see from his height, I can see his head. And he was looking right at me and I could see him. And I couldn't see his eyes at this time because I guess the light wasn't shining on him no more. But I can see the reflection of his head, you know. And then I kept driving. And as I looked through my mirror, I kept driving. I looked through my mirror. He stepped out a little bit onto the road with the pig in his hand still. Just to sort of like peek around and to see if I was really leaving. And then I started driving away slowly. And my heart was pumping. So I was so scared. My dog pissed himself. He, he, he had piss all over him. Oh, oh man. I don't blame him. I don't blame him, my poor guy. So I took off. I took off, and then uh, I was heading towards Dallas. I pulled over, man. I pulled over at a rest area, and I had to compose myself and say, what the hell just happened to me? Nobody's going to believe that I just saw this thing. And it was two of them. It was a male and a female. And I'm guessing they had a baby hidden in between the, 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 the big patch of wood. And he signaled them that I was there. And that's what I felt, that something was watching me. The baby was watching me, but I got the feeling that something was watching me. And it had to be the baby, because at that time, I hadn't walked into the woods yet when I got that feeling. I never thought about Sasquatch, you know, and it never really faced me. Until that day, now I'm fascinated by these beings. I'm fascinated, Wes. And then uh, the guy who told me about the booger told me about your show. He said, go online and go and check this show out. Go to YouTube and check them out. And he said, Sasquatch Chronicles. I wrote it down and I started listening since like the last year and a half. But this happened on St. Patrick's Day. I won't forget it was St. Patrick's Day. Wes, I'm from New Jersey and we tell it like it is, man. And I'm not a woods person and I don't claim to be a hunter. I've never hunted. I've, I've never been any of those people. But I know what I saw, man. I know that they exist. And anyway, I remember hearing a story about another guy from Longview who told the story. The same area. Because I got to research if in that area there was Sasquatch. And there was another guy from Longview who, uh, who I think he said that he hit one with a car. And, and then later on he told his, his father, said, what the hell happened to the car? And he said, I hit a deer. And he didn't tell his father the story. But he, when he called in and he told the story, he said that, he hit a Sasquatch with the car. And then I started thinking, I started saying, could this be the same Sasquatch? And the scar on his leg was the scar from the, him being hit by the car? You know? And I'm I just wondering. But uh, that Longview area, it, it, there is a lot of woods around that area, especially the part of, of I-20 where I was going through. There's a lot of woods out there and a lot of wild animals. Yeah, and um, you know the account, Armando. It's it's fascinating that the female was up in the tree. How big do you think she was compared to him? You said he was about oh my, eight feet. Yes, because when she walked up next to him, uh, and and he was crouching down until he finally stood up a little bit and and showed me his whole chest and body and showed me the pig. She was probably like uh, when she came up to sort of mumble something to him. She had to be like at least seven feet tall. Because he 
was he was bigger than she was. He was like at least another foot bigger. And how I know the, how big they really were because I didn't get the guts to go back until like three months ago. <laughs> I, I went back to the same area and I pulled over because I looked it up on my um, um because every time you park the truck, it's logged into the GPS. You know where you are, the coordinates, and all of that. I have it. I have it set up that way. And uh, I looked up the coordinates, and I stopped in the same spot, and I remember seeing the same woods, and, and then I went into the area where I last seen them, and I looked up at the tree where she was. The tree was up, and the branch that was broken, that she was up like 20 feet up in the air, man, and jumped down like like it was nothing, like like it, like they do it all the time, and and from the size of of where he where his head was, and and the backdrop. He had to be all of eight feet, monster, huge. And he, you could, I couldn't really see his ears. He, he, I couldn't see his ears. I saw his head, but his ears were like hidden by hair. He had, he, and he had like a nice manicured goatee. And he didn't have long hair, you know, like, like a mullet or nothing like that. He had just short hair all the way down, covering up to his forehead. And around his eyes, there was no hair. Around, like a whole circle around his eyes, and they were like sunken deep, and he had a, a, a protruding eyebrow. You can see it was bone. It was solid bone. And then around, around his nose, there was no hair. He didn't have hair on his nose. And then uh, around his lips, which his mouth was really wide, when he opened up his mouth, I was like, oh, my God, look at the size of that thing. And uh, he had no hair on his, like, you know, on his lips, but everything else. He had a mustache, and he had he had a goatee, and he had a full hair around his, his cheeks. And the hair on his on, uh, from his neck down to, like, the crevice of, of the chest was longer. The hair was a little bit longer, and he had great, a great patch coming down the side of, of his chest right here from his shoulder down. He had a great, a gray hair patch. And uh, anyway, Wes, um, I, I've only told that one other person, man, and, and I've been afraid to tell my, my, even my wife. My wife doesn't know. Well, and, I'm, uh, I'm glad, I'm really glad that you shared it. You know, it is a fascinating account. I hear a lot of them in Texas uh, going after wild pigs. I mean, I've talked to many hunters who've seen them run down pigs. And I, I want to ask you, when you were looking at the face, did the face look more human-like or did it look more like a non-human primate, like a, a gorilla or a monkey or uh, how would you his describe body, that his face? Body, his body was like a man gorilla, solid, wide, super strong bodybuilder gorilla. But his face was not a gorilla face. He had a nose that looked like a like like an Aborigine nose, you know, like like when you look at an Aborigine guy, he has that wide nose, not not a not a didn't have a long bridge. It was wide nose, like sunken, like like somebody punched him, you know. But uh, it was that type of nose, and his skin. I won't forget his skin. His skin was like a leather gray. And it was like grayish, like wrinklish leather, you know, gray leather. That's what it looked like to me. And uh, his teeth were were, uh, were like blocks, like like ours. His teeth were like square, yellow teeth. And he did have fangs. He had uh, canine teeth, but they they were like ours, like not that big, like a dog or nothing. He had the canines, but like maybe the same size as ours, but in his size. And his tongue was pink. When he opened that big mouth, I saw that tongue. He had a pink tongue. Uh, and the sound he made was, oh my God, it was like an amplifier hitting me. Like, like. And, and Wes, I haven't told you this. Oh, um, that same night, when I would try to go to sleep, I couldn't go to sleep because I was sick. I felt like, uh, I felt weird. I, I felt anxious. And like, like my stomach was turning, and I felt like, like something was like, like pulling my guts, like, like, 
Like some somebody was pulling my guts, man. Like like, oh, what is this crazy feeling? And I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep at all. And I was like that for almost two days, where I lost sleep. Uh, and I just felt sick and not nauseous, not something that would make me puke, but just like a weird sick. My stomach was hurting me, and uh, my knees were weak. Like my knees were like like weak. Like I I could walk. Like like it was hurting me, you know. And uh, I yeah. started saying, "What the what the hell just happened to me?" And then later on, as as I researched, you know, and I listened to some of the accounts on on your show, that they have the infrasound, and uh, and I guess I got hit with that thing solid, because when that when that monster screamed at me, and I don't even want to call him a monster because I think he was pretty cool with me. He let me go. He could have killed me. He could have easily killed me, and she could have easily killed me. Because the way that these things move so fast, when she took off to the woods, I was like, oh, my God. It was like like a blur, like, Phew. I said, holy, that thing could have grabbed me so fast and, and totally destroyed me. And, and there was nothing I could have done about it. Why do you think that they didn't harm you? Uh, this is what I was thinking later on. I said, you know, I stumbled onto a hunt. They were hunting, and she was up in the tree signaling him as he was chasing. When the, the sounds that I heard of the, of the animals running, the pigs running, was him running the pigs around, and she was sort of like guiding him when she was doing that. Rook, rook. She was telling him, now, now, there, grab him, or something like that, you know? So they were hunting, and she was coordinating the hunt from the top of the tree. As to as for him to go to the exact spot where she was pointing and letting him know right there, there he is, he's coming or something like that. And uh, they were hunting, and then later on, I figured that I might have, have become a challenger for, for him, a, a rival for for his meal, and he wasn't having it. When he screamed at me, it was like this is my meal, and he showed me the pig. The pig was about two hundred pounds, guys. This was a big pig. And he held it up like, like if you grabbed a, a, a jug of water. He, he picked it up like, like nothing. That's what I thought. I, I said, they, they, they were hunting, and, and I happened to come across them. That they hid the baby, and uh, they hunted, and then I, I came across them. They, how she didn't hear me, because I snuck up on the dog, because they were preoccupied. And they were maybe like, like 30, 30, 40, maybe... 40 feet, 50 feet from me, you know? I, I'm not a good with, with distance, you know? Uh, but anyway, um, there was steam coming off his body, man. That's, that, that blew me away. The steam that was coming off his big body was crazy. And the pig was steaming also. And he could, his breath, I could see his breath. Wow. Like, you know, when it's cold, when, when, uh, when, when the cold air comes out of your breath, I can see that a lot. And I can hear his, him breathing like heavy breaths, like, <laughs> Oh, oh, like that type of breathing. And she did the same thing. She was like, oh, and then she screamed at me too. You know, she screamed at me first. And I felt hers, but not like his. His was like, knocked me backwards, that I almost stumbled and fell backwards when, when that happened. Thank God they didn't harm you, Armando. I mean, um, you're in a very... When he, he, he nodded at me, Wes. He nodded at me. I swear to you, he nodded at me like... Like, like when somebody goes, says, go. And that's, that's what he was nodding at. Like, like, get out of here. You know, and, and I, and I realized that he let me go because he, he could have just put that pig down and grabbed me like it was nothing. Mm. And I would have been, dead. I would have been dead right there on the spot. I'm lucky I didn't get a heart attack from, from this thing. Yeah, no and, doubt. No doubt. What do you think that they are, Armando? What do you think that these creatures are? I mean, you got a good look at two of them. And the account's fascinating. There's a lot to unpack from the behavior. But what what is your honest opinion as far as what you think these things are? Um, after doing some research, and I've seen the video of Patty, they weren't as bulky as part uh, as Patty. You know, the, the female was was like trim, like solid. You know, not bulky. He was bulky in the chest. And uh, not really thick waist, you know. He didn't have that patty waist that she had, that this thick, thick uh, uh, buttocks. 
he wasn't like that. He was just solid, like like a like a built bodybuilders, even way stronger than that. But uh, I think that these are beings that have been here for a long time. But the natives have been talking about forever, and and people have been making fun of them. You know, the natives have known about them, and uh, professionals have ran into them. You know, um, there's been accounts of uh, I think it was Roosevelt who talked about them. Uh, and other other famous people, you know, professional police officers and, and hunters who have said uh, it's like a monkey, man. But I don't think they're there. I don't think it's a complete monkey. I think they're a hybrid between a, maybe a human and some other being that might not even be from Earth, you know, and was left here. For, I, that's what I figure that it might be a being that has been here so long, way before us that was placed on the planet and left here to survive and, and I guess populate the planet, you know, as much as they could. And, and little by little, I think our government is going to have to let us know the truth about these creatures, these beings, uh, because they are beings. They communicate. They were communicating. They, they, they weren't just, they were talking to each other. And, and uh, now that I've done my research, and I look around, there's a lot of things going on. Like I remember back in the day, the $5 million man, the $5 million man fought Sasquatch. I remember that came out. And the Boggy Creek came out, I think, a little bit before that. Boggy Creek uh, movie. And then uh, um, they made a couple of other Bigfoot movies. And then uh, now you got uh, um, Jack Lynx messing with Sasquatch. You know, so I think they're throwing little, little by little, feeding the people to get you used to a Sasquatch. There's a lot of cartoon movies now that kids are watching, uh, Son of Bigfoot. There's, there's like three or four movies that are out in the theaters right now about Sasquatch. And then you have Harry and the Hendersons. You know, uh, I think little by little, they're going to soon have to let us know that there is another being on the planet like us. You know, yeah, I tend to that, agree with you. Do you still stop and and go pee in the woods like you used to, or did you kind of quit quit doing no, that? No, man. You know, you you know something, man. I, I feel bad about this. My dog refused to get in the truck for months and months after that. He would not get in the truck, I, and it's my buddy. I'm like, come on, you coming with me? And he would just run away from the truck. He's like, uh uh-uh. uh, he remembers, and he he probably smelled them because he's got better smelling than I do. But he does not, he would not get in the truck. For almost six months, my dog would not come with me, man. Until I finally, I finally got him little by little. I took some short little trips. And he would always jump on the window and look into the woods. And keep looking around and looking around and looking at me. And looking around and looking at me. Like like to say, you're not taking me back there again, are you? You know, that... <laughs> It's funny, but yeah, he 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 uh, he wouldn't go into the truck, man. And I felt bad. I was like, I don't have another dog with me, my buddy with me. But he finally got back in the truck. But now I would not stop and take a leak on the side of the woods again. Like when I went back to that area to take a look again, it was daytime. <laughs> it was daytime. I would not go at night. It was daytime, and uh, and I looked around real quick. I went and I took a look and I and I researched and I said, oh, look at the height. This is this, this, and that, and uh, that was about it. I, I got in my truck. I wasn't even there, not even 15, 20 minutes. I was gone. And I looked around for, for, for footprints, but it was already later. You know, it was it was way later, you know, way, way, way later. There was no footprints, man, and um, nothing else around. But I'm, I'm guessing that is part of their territory, that Longview area where there's a lot of pigs and deer, and, and all, all animals, you know, that they like to hunt. Yeah, it could be. It but, definitely could be. I've, I've, I get many accounts from Texas, many accounts from Texas, and it's the same type of behavior. You know, they're chasing hogs. They're, um, I'm just surprised that you got out of there with your head head on uh, because, you know, you, you got in between them and the food, and then the female was there, the male was there. I mean, what an encounter. I mean, really, what an encounter, Armando. It's it's one of those things that you'll never forget. I don't know if you were hit with infrasound or if it was fear uh, and adrenaline dump, you know, where your legs are shaking and your body's just kind of 
reacting to that adrenaline dump or if it's actual infrasound. Um, I don't know. Uh, but well, I, find... I, felt, I felt I felt sick. I felt sick yeah. for almost almost two days, Wes. And it was a weird feeling, like uh, like if you go down a roller coaster, that like like I, I kept getting that feeling in my stomach, like churning, like like I couldn't, I could barely eat. I, I didn't want to eat, and, and and I had trouble sleeping. You know, from 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 the feeling that I had, which is normal. I think that's pretty normal. To feel that way you know it's an amazing account armando i i really appreciate that you take the time to come on and share it i know you haven't shared it with many people and i know you're on the road please be safe while you're on the road uh but thank you again for coming on and you know no uh, i appreciate that wes and, and i love your show man you, you are you're actually letting people uh vent out like me I, I i've been wanting to tell somebody and then i've been listening to when i'm on the road i'll put on your show in the morning or at nighttime, you know, before I go to sleep with, with the music that at the end of the mute, oh man, it puts me to sleep so nice. I, I like listening to your shows. Um, um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, every time I'm out there, man, I'm looking into the woods and I'm careful, you know, I, I don't pull over on the side of the road like that while I'm about telling no more. But uh, I've been wanting to tell somebody because it's been driving me crazy. I think about it all the time. I am especially, you know, when you're on the road, all you see is woods, especially at night. You know, when you see a little eye shine, I'm like, oh, Lord, oh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Well, keep me up to date. Let me know if you have any other run-ins while you're out there on the road. I know you're long haul, so... Uh, let me know if anything else pops up out there, will you? Oh my God! Well, you know, I look, I look all the time. I look, but I'm going so fast that I couldn't tell you if I saw another one or not. But this time, when I pulled over there, that's gonna live with me forever. And I wrote it down. I wrote down everything that I saw as much as I could recall. And uh, I don't think I left anything out, man. It, it was just. But, you know, I feel lucky, too, at the same time. And I got to see this being. I feel lucky that I'm one of the few who can actually say I've seen them. And, and if, the, if the government ever says, you know, here they are, then they'll say, Armando, man, you were right. <laughs> Holy cow, I'm sorry for freaking not believing you. But I, I haven't told too many people. Only only one or two other people. And not even my wife, man. But my wife is not a believer in that. Yeah, well, I'm honored that you'd come on here. Thank you again. Yeah, Wes, uh, thank you. Thank you for actually uh, hearing my story, and uh, I love your show, Wes. Keep up the good work, man. Thanks, Armando. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone.
Save me from myself, let me drown 